probably guess what you're thinking. You're looking up and you're reading the title and you're probably like, what the hell, doesn't this dude already have a how-to one through three? And you're right, I do. But the entire reason I made the how-to was so that when people ask me how do I get started, what do I need to do to get going on game development, I could just direct them towards that video. But as times progress, people still keep asking me that, and these are people that I know have watched that video. Personally, I don't really rewatch our videos, so I went back, and I, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, okay, maybe I should have a look at this. Maybe it's not getting the point across. So I watched it, and while I still agree with all my points in it, I feel like I could have done it a lot better. Like I, It's really abstract. The, the viewer doesn't really leave with the sense of, alright, I need to go out and do this, this, and this, and I'll be sorted in game development. And since it is our most popular video, I'd really like to redo it, seeing as it kind of represents us, our project. If it's the first thing people see of me, I'd kind of like for it to suck a little less. So, that's what I'm doing. I still recommend you watch that other video, because I'm going to be recovering several parts, but I'm also not going to cover some of the things covered. So, I'd like to make that kind of a prerequisite. If you haven't already seen it, go watch it and come back. Okay, before I waste anybody's time, or more importantly, waste my own time, let me address the question I keep getting. And I can't believe I'm getting this question, what program do I use to make insert game here? Okay, this is a programming channel. This is called Game Development. And um, we're not using programs, we're writing programs here. So if you're not interested in programming, learning to program, writing your own games, uh, leave. Why are you here, dude? Go find RPG Maker. Go do what all the other cool 12-year-olds are doing. See you later. Alright, this is for those of you who really don't care what I have to say. You just want a real quick 10-second answer. You don't want to hear all the specifics. You just want to go out and learn. This is your answer. You go get a book. For example, I want to learn Java. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but if you did, you'd go and buy a Java book. If you want to, you know, do your back end of a website in PHP, you go out and get a PHP book. Start teaching yourself. If you want to, I don't know why you'd want to do this, but if you did, you'd buy a JavaScript book. If you want to embed Ruby into your engine as your scripting language, you should probably go out and buy a Ruby book. Start teaching yourself. If you want to write an engine in C++, very good idea, I recommend it, you go out and get a C++ book. If you want to use the SDL API in your engine, you want to start learning how to do graphics, sound, input with C, C++, go get a book like this. If you just want to be a sadistic bastard, the book of choice would probably be a calculus book. Go out and get one. Start reading. Now. I know a bunch of you are probably thinking to yourselves, why don't you just look at an online tutorial? They're free, you don't have to go out buy these expensive books. Well, that's also true, but for those of you who actually really don't know where to start, these books would probably be your best bet. The reason being is these authors get paid lots of money to write these. They're going to take extra care to make sure that those of you who really don't have any experience, who don't know what's going on, they're going to take extra care to make sure you understand it. They start off assuming you're a complete idiot because they're making money off these books. They need to be good. The people who write online tutorials probably assume you already know kind of what you're doing or else you wouldn't be looking at an online tutorial to begin with. You know, those people have lives, they have jobs. They're not going to explain things quite as well. But either way, you're going to have to teach yourself unless you pay a lot of money, go to a fancy school or college where they teach you game programming. And even then, it's, it's a task that really you're teaching yourself, no matter which way you look at it. No matter what approach you take, I recommend, if you really have no idea where to start, go find a book. You can't go wrong with it. They already assume you're an idiot in half these books, so even if you're an idiot, you're set. Okay, for those of you who are still here and haven't exited out of this video or left to go buy a book already or anything, I'm assuming you're ready for me to elaborate. I believe there are generally two methods to getting going with game development, two different paths you can take, and one of them involves a game development specific language, and the other one involves general programming languages. What you have to keep in mind is there's a trade-off here. 
With the game development language, it's going to be easier to develop with. You're going to have everything you need to get started sooner. It's not going to take as much time. Not going to, you're not going to have to try as hard to do things in it. But at the same time, it's going to be a lot less powerful than if you used a multi-purpose language. But then the multi-purpose languages are going to take you a hell of a lot longer to learn. Not only do you have to learn them, but you have to learn an API or library to associate with them. So I'm going to go through and discuss how to get started with either of these paths. Okay, as I've said, languages that are game development specific, such as Blitz Plus, Dark Basic, and I know there's plenty more out there, those are probably a good place to start. They're easier to begin with, they're easier in general to develop with, they take a lot less time, but at the same time, you're compromising that with the amount of things you can do with them, how powerful they are, things like that. What you have to keep in mind is that when you're programming a game, it's different from, you know, just standard programming, DOS console things. You have things like input, audio, video, different hardware manipulation you have to worry about. And these languages are good because they have that kind of thing built in. You don't have to worry about go getting another API, OpenGL, Allegro, SDL, all that kind of stuff to integrate with your project. It's built in the language, it handles that sort of thing for you. So all you have to do is basically learn the language and you're set. If you're, if you're uh, looking to take this path, I know there's plenty of books out there, just look for one on Dark Basic, Blitz Plus, any sort of game specific language because it has that stuff built in. Once you learn that, you're pretty much set. This is the, the easiest way to go. Uh, also, I'd probably recommend this if you don't have much experience, even if you plan to use a multi-purpose language later. This will definitely be a good way for you to get your foot in the door with game development. Alright, for those of you who are taking this path, I'm going to assume you're a little more hardcore, a little more experienced, or maybe you're a little more arrogant and stupid, I don't know, but you should know that this is going to require quite a bit more effort on your part. Rather than just being able to run off and learn your little game development language, it's a two-part process. You have to learn your general programming language, then some sort of way to create a game with it, manipulate the hardware, stuff like that. Because these languages are not meant just for game development. You know, C, C++, you can make anything from simple little DOS windows to Paint Shop Pro. I don't know if they actually made that in C++, but you could. Pretty much, it, you can make any sort of application with this. They don't have built-in, you know, input, uh, audio, video manipulation. That requires an additional library, and so just keep in mind, first you have to learn the language, then the next step is going to your library or API. Alright, before any of you try and move on to step two, I'm putting a disclaimer right here. None of you, I forbid every one of you to move on with this step, unless you know your language. Game development is already one of the most difficult applications of programming out there. You're going to be either learning a graphics API, a game development library, anything like that on top of your actual game logic, you know, learning how to test collision, learning how to do AI, things like that. The very least you could do is be halfway competent with the language that you're using as your tool to develop this. So do not move on until you've become decent at the language. Just concentrate on that until you're good at it. 